everyone welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to be showing you how i shape nails as far as stiletto coffin uh, rounded almond whatever so i'm going to be using my hand trainer or my nail trainer um, but i can't show it to you right now because it's holding up my phone but i'm also going to be using my little pana nail trainer um, tips which come like this and it do come with two different sizes, which is a 2.2 centimeters and a 2.6. So there's only two sizes that go on the nail trainer. So I'm also going to be using a hand file and I was already like starting to use it. So that's why um, it's dirty because I was trying to file off some acrylic on the nail tips. So anyways, I'm also going to be using my nail tips. And these are the ones that I use on my nail trainer. Um, most of the time only because they're a little bit thinner and I don't like to use them on actual um, clients because like I said they're a little bit too thin compared to what I use um, other than that I'm also going to be using a tip cutter and then I'm also going to be using a regular like toenail clipper like the big ones and I think that's it oh yeah and then I'm also going to be using my KDS KDS nail glue and that'll be to glue on the tips so let's get started. Alrighty, so once again, I'm using my Pana nail trainer hand. And as you can see, I already have some tips on there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this one from the last video that I did. And then I'm going to apply the nail tips. So once again, it comes with two different sizes, which is the 2.2 and the 2.6. And usually I like to use the smaller ones like on these fingers, like these four fingers. And then I use the bigger one on the thumb. So you literally just clip them on. They look like this on the back. And you just put it in that little hole and make sure that it clicks like this. And then for her thumb, as you can see, they are bigger. Here's the small one, which is the 2.2, and here is the 2.6. So you can tell that it's a lot bigger. So that one's going to go on her thumb. Okay. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go in with my nail clipper and just cut those down. Because this is basically like somebody's natural nail. You don't glue tips on over a really long natural nail. So that's why we're going to cut them down. Okay. So then now I'm going to go in with my hand file, which is a 100-100 hand file. And I'm just going to shape up the nail. As you can see, I've already done it to the other nails that were already on there. Okay, so then now we're going to go in and kind of just rough up the surface. So it's basically like we're prepping the natural nail. So we're going to go in with our hand file and you just want to remove that shine. Because if not, it's going to be harder for the nail tips to stay on the um, plastic. So once again, I'm just going in with my hand file and I'm removing the shine from the tip. <coughs> Alrighty, so now I'm just going to dust it off and then I'm going to go in with my nail tips. So once again, I'm using my nail tips, which are the ones that I got from my local nail supply store, but they are really thin. That's why I don't use them on actual clients. Let me show you. Like they bend so easily, like they're almost like paper thin. So this is why I don't use them on actual clients. So remember, the most important thing when working with a hand trainer, you want to make sure that the tips that you're using aren't too small because if not, they're going to want to pop back up and they're not going to stay on the nail. So as you can see, I'm going to go in with this one. It is a little bit bigger, but we can always go back and file it down because if not, it would not stay. See, like this is a number five and this is a number six. So 
if I was to glue this on there, even though it fits perfectly, it'll still want to come back up because I'm having to like force it down. So if I put glue on there and try to glue it down, it's going to keep coming off. So a lot of people would tell me like, hey, you know, I can't get my nail tips to stay on. You need to make sure that you go a size up and then just file the sides down. So once again, I'm going in with my KDS nail glue. I'm going to put it on the nail tip. Sorry, I have lint everywhere. So put it on the nail tip, and then glue it down, and just hold it for a couple of seconds. I know my KDS glue um, dries really fast, but sometimes it takes longer on this nail trainer because we're gluing it on actual plastic. Okay, so that's down, and then I'm just going to press that little corner down because it looked like it was coming up. And to prevent little air bubbles in your glue, just make sure you press the nail down really good. Like you actually have to put pressure on there. Okay, so that's it for that one. So same thing for the other one. Remember, always go up a size to make sure they stay on really good. Just hold it down. And see, this glue dries pretty fast. So I'm using a number five nail tip for all of these. See, oops. So you remember just put pressure down just hold it until it's dry and it really doesn't take that long this one looks like it's a little bit bigger let's see oops and put some more glue on this one Let me get it out the way so I don't move it. So this is a number five tip. Yes, yeah, a number five. So it's the same size as that one, and that one is a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go up to a number four. That should be good. No, that's still a little bit. I think this tip was an, the bigger one for some reason. So I'm gonna go in with a number three. Yeah, that's better. And then afterwards, I'm just going to go back in and file the sides down whenever I start shaping. So you see how easily they go on. So remember, make sure that the tips that you're using on your hand trainer are not too small. Yeah, so for this one, these two were the same size, so I'm going to go in with a number three for those. Okay, so they're all on there. I'll probably leave them long, um, or I might do some short, some long. So, okay, let's see. I'm gonna cut them a little bit. So I'm going in with my tip cutter, and remember, you want this blade to be facing you. So I'm gonna go in and cut them a little bit. And whenever you're cutting, you wanna make sure that your clipper is really straight. You don't want it leaning over to the side or that side. Make sure that it's nice and straight. And just cut wherever you want or wherever your client wants. Let's see. I'm just gonna cut them all like the same length.
There you go. This one's coming off. Okay, so the first one I'm going to do is, I guess I'm going to do a squared. So whenever I do a squared, as you can see, the tips that we used were a little bit bigger. So these sides right here are wider than a natural nail. So whenever you're shaping, you want to make sure that the tip matches up with their natural nail. You don't want the tip to be really wide and then their natural nail to be small because it's not going to look as natural. So what you want to do first is make sure that when you file, make sure you file along with their nail grooves. So I'm going to go in and thin it out. So as you can see, my file is in straight. I'm not leaning it over. I'm not doing this. It's going straight in there with their nail grooves. It's like a 90 degrees angle with their nail grooves. Okay, so you see now it's the same size. The nail tip right here is the same size as our natural nail. So now to file the actual tip, I'm going to go in like this with my hand file at a 90 degrees angle with the actual tip and then I'm just going to file back and forth and you can do it like this as well just still make sure that it's at a 90 degrees angle but sometimes I can get the perfect shape by just doing this but when you do it sometimes you want to make sure that you hold the tip down especially if they're long and if they're thin like this because they will start like bending but only these tips remember I don't use these on my clients I only use this one from my hand trainer So see for a square you don't do that much filing because the tips are already squared you just have to go back and redefine that shape so that's a square as you can see it's really tape or not taper but it's really squared at the tip and it matches up with the nail so now if you're doing a full set you would just go in and blend the nail tip to make sure that it looks really natural so what you're doing is you're just blending in that small line. So when you put the acrylic down, you won't be able to see it and then dust it off. So that was the first one. That was our squared. Remember, you want to make sure you fall in on the sides and then you just do your tip and that's it. So once again, that's the squared nail. Alrighty, so up next, I'm going to do, I guess I'll do a coffin. So what I do is I go in with my nail clipper. As you can see, it is a straight nail clipper. And I actually didn't know that they had the curved and the straight, but this straight one works perfectly. So if you can find one, that would be perfect. So what I do is I just go in and cut the corners of the nail tip. And what this does, it just literally saves up time as far as filing. Because instead of having to file that corner, we just cut it off. So for this, we do the same thing. You want to make sure that your nail tip matches up with their natural nail. So we're going to go in. And for this one, instead of filing straight out, we are going to file at an angle. As you can see, my nail file is going in at an angle. And same thing for the other side. And just alternate from one side to one side. You don't want to file a whole bunch on this side because then your nail is going to start being crooked. So make sure you do, I don't know, maybe you can count like one, two, three, one, two, three, and just keep going back and forth. That way you know that your nail isn't going to be crooked because you're doing the same amount of files on each side. Okay, so. I guess this one would be like a ballerina. I don't like my coffins this narrow at the top, but I know there's people that do. So that's why I did it like this. So this one, same thing, we file it at a 90 degrees angle so we have a nice straight tip. Once again, I guess this one would be the ballerina. I like my coffins like this to where they're almost squared, but I know there's people that like their coffins a little bit more narrow. Okay. So that was that. As you can see, that was really easy. You literally just go in on the sides. You go side, side, and then the tip and that's it and then just blend it in the middle 
so up next i'm gonna do a stiletto so same thing as the coffin one or yeah the baller ballerina one you go in with, go in with your nail clipper cut the sides and this one you can go in a little bit further you see how i cut the tip a little bit more you can do that that way you save even more time so same thing we're gonna go in and file the sides and remember file the same amount of times that way you don't have a crooked nail or if not just kind of look at your nail and see if it's leaning more on that side or what and then just go back and file some more so this one is same same as the ballerina but instead of making it squared up the top we're just going to make it pointy and you can do this as pointy as you want. If you want it pointier, then you just keep filing more and more. But I like mine like this. And then blend it in the middle. So as you can see, by us cutting the sides of the nail tip, it saves us a lot of filing time. So now we have a squared nail, a ballerina, stiletto. Let me see. This one I'm going to do it coffin. I'm going to do the do it the way that I do my coffin. So I'm going to cut the tips or the, the corner soft. As you can see, I didn't cut as much. I'm going to go in and file. So a lot of my clients like their coffins like this. I don't ever just do the ballerina shape. My clients like their um, their coffins not as narrow. And then I go in at a 90 degrees angle and file the tip. And blend the tip. Or blend the, yeah, the nail tip. So that's about the shape that I have. You see how it's not too narrow. It's like an in between a ballerina and a squared nail. Yeah, I love that shape. So once again, we have a squared ballerina, stiletto, and coffin. So for the thumb, I guess I'll do like an almond shape. Let me see. So same thing. We're going to cut it off, but we're not cutting too much because we don't want it to be too narrow. So same thing, now we're going to go in with our hand files. So we're going to do this as if we were doing the coffin. We're not filing too much because we don't want it really narrow. And then we're going to round off the corners. Okay, so if your client wanted their nails rounded, this is rounded to me. You see how it's not too narrow, but it's not too wide. That would be rounded. And if they want an almond shape, then you just file it a little bit more narrow. As if you were filing to make it stiletto. But you don't want the tip really, really narrow. You want it to be more rounded. So it's just the almond shape is like a, in between a round nail and a stiletto nail. And then blend the tip. Okay, so that is my almond nail. So once again, we have the coffin, the stiletto, the ballerina, and the squared nail. So once again, I used my nail tips, a nail clipper, a file, a tip cutter, and then I also used my brush to dust the nails, and then I used my uh, nail trainer practice tips and my practice hand. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at GetNail32. And I'll see you guys in my next video.
Also, don't forget that I have my 50k giveaway coming soon. So don't forget to go follow me on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to my channel.